folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and good grief, because I'm going to be reviewing the fourth and final installment of the Peanuts movie collection called Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown, and Don't Come Back, the 1980 film about Charlie Brown, along with Linus, Peppermint Patty, Marcy, Snoopy, and Woodstock, up taking a trip to Europe as part of the students exchange program and only to find out that Charlie Brown received a letter from a little girl from France and the fact that she's giving him an invitation by going to the chateau and staying there and I didn't show the VHS tape that I have in my hand because you know it's already already on a piled up with so many stuff that I have in all my boxes inside the closet because you know, I wanted to get them all out but I had some trouble with a lot of things and it probably take you know so many hours to do so so I said I'll just do it like maybe in the future you know I'll probably show my entire VHS and DVD collection of all the Charlie Brown movies and specials that I own I mean I did wanted to show you the VHS tape of it though along with the previous free films that I've owned which I now have already on DVD thank goodness so yeah but I'll probably do that someday but either way you know it's cool the film stars Aaron Skelly as Charlie Brown Daniel Anderson as Linus Van Pelt Patricia Patz as Peppermint Patty Casey Carlson as Marcy and Alyssa Bordelin as Sally Brown, Michelle Miller as Lucy Van Pelt, Bill Melendez as Snoopy and Woodstock, Pascal de Barlet as Pierre, Rosaline Rubens as Barlet Hoffer and Patty, with Scott Beach in an uncredited role by Mel Blanc, you know, the guy with a thousand voices of all the Looney Tune cartoons and many others that follows. Yeah, it's produced by once again Lee Mendelson, Bill Melendez, and Charles M. Schultz, written by Charles M. Schultz, based on his popular comic strip, and is directed once again by Bill Melendez and Phil Roman. Yeah, the two guys that gave us Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown. Yeah. So here it goes. The movie begins set on a rainy, stormy night in France. One guy who just came from a sports bar had went inside his car and driven all the way into the rural villages where the greenhouses are located and went straight down to the chateau where we then focus a little girl who just brought in a U.S. Army satchel that stenciled with a service number that is. She then opened the bag and she just found a photograph of what seems to be an American Army soldier by the name of S. Brown along with all the information. She then written a letter to him that's being sent to America. Meanwhile Linus Van Pelt has officially announced that he's being participated in a student exchange program in his class and offers Charlie Brown to join in which apparently Charlie Brown is being baffled on why is he being part of the participation is because Linus had explained to him that it would definitely be a good experience for him after Linus was already introducing to two French students by the name of Babat and Jacques anyway when he finally got home, announced Snoopy that he's going to be going on a trip with Linus to Europe. Yeah. He then finally went into his mailbox and received the letter that the little girl had sent him, only to find out that it's written in French. So suddenly he finally gets a phone call to Peppermint Patty, that it, only to find out that she she too is being announced that her class is going on a trip with Marcy 
by joining the student exchange program to a trip all the way to Europe. So then, once they arrive at the airport already packing up, you know, including Snoopy and Woodstock, you know, already getting ready to go, they went into their airport, you know, while all the Peanuts gang had raved to Charlie Brown, along with Linus, Pepper and Patty, Marcy, and of course Snoopy and Woodstock, by saying this. Bon voyage, Charlie Brown! And Lucy actually says, And don't come back! Yeah, and they're all <laughs> scourged. On the way to the airplane, on board, on a trip to Europe, yeah, because I know they were riding on the car and, and they went up to the escalator. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, Snoopy wants to get in first class. Yeah. Well, anyway, once they went on board on the plane, Charlie Brown had received a letter and decided to show it to Pepper and Patty and Marcy. And then Marcy, who actually had been studying French, on the preparation by visiting to France. She translated the letter only to find out that that Charlie Brown was given an invitation all the way to the Chateau de la Ma Balsine, which means the Castle of Bad Neighbor, which is sent by Violet Hansifu. Yeah. Which that's her name. Pepper Patty has asked who she could be, but Charlie Brown has no idea. So then, minutes before landing, you know, they were watching an in-flight movie. Yeah, which I know, this was the one scene where, where Snoopy and Woodstock were laughing their heads off while watching, you know, an in-flight movie on the bunnies, which all of a sudden, a stupid kid right behind them actually smacked them with a newspaper. Yeah, what a jerk. It's even worse. Yeah, you know, when Snoopy was trying to, you know, lean back on the chair and then suddenly the stupid kid even pushes them back like that. Yeah, what a jerk. Anyway, once they finally arrive at the airport in, which could have been apparently in Scotland, but they wound up landing in London at the Heathrow Airport before continuing to Flance. They went on to go sightseeing on a tour downtown while Snoopy and Woodstock had once up playing tennis at Wilmington. Yeah, sort of in that sort of way where, you know, Snoopy is just playing, you know, tennis and, you know, getting all frustrated and always hitting the racket. Sort of in the scene and you're a good sport, Charlie Brown. Yeah, that was so funny. I remember that scene. When Snoopy finds himself losing, you know, he lashes out and later gets thrown out out of the court. He and Woodstock had later went in onto the Victoria Railway Station and rejoined the kids along with the ride, you know, where they wound up taking a train to London to Dover, which they admired the white cliffs of Dover before boarding into the hovercraft and wound up going straight to the English Channel. But then later on, they travel to France and they finally meet a boy named Pierre, which Pepper and Patty and Marcy decided to stay inside the farmhouse. Meanwhile, Charlie Brown and Linus, along with Snoopy and Woodstock, you know, because I know they were driving around and, you know, they were getting some French bread, you know, and all this other stuff before they went to meet him. They're already, you know, dealing with the farm chores, eating French cuisine, and and having them wear school uniforms for the local school, you know, on the other side of the corner. Charlie Brown and Linus, as well as Snoopy and Woodstock, decided to stay at the Chateau, which, in order to find out what was going on. And, of course, Pierre had shuddered to find out that that it has a bad neighbor over there, and, and that particular neighbor is the one that, that tells them to get... Uh, to get kicked out or shut out or, or goodness knows what bad will happen to Charlie Brown and Linus and the rest. I mean, considering that it, w it was some mistake, you know, they, they decided to go in anyway and, and they stayed over, yeah, during the night, yeah. And then 
By the next morning, Charlie Brown and Linus had found out while Snoopy was supposed to be guarding, you know, them in case you know they get attacked or something. Yeah, Snoopy went up to go to the sports bar along with Woodstock, and they were just playing, you know, those soccer table games that they were playing. Yeah, you know those. And then also he was listening to music while being dressed up like a like he came from the army. You know, he's always he's getting like happy and then sad while he was drinking root beer uh, along with the ride. So then the next morning, you know, Charlie Brown and Linus had found out that you know all the food, you know, mostly breakfast is set on the table along with the chairs only to find out what was going on. So then they're about to get ready to go to school where Charlie Brown had to sit in with Peppermint Patty, you know, which happens to be the scene that's been done in the comics and of course in an episode of the Charlie Brown Snoopy show where Peppermint Patty just keeps bugging Charlie Brown about you know how they're sitting together and and the fact that he's trying to get some of the answers wrong or something like that and he's saying all of this criticism and stuff to to make Charlie Brown even mad because by the end after you know Pepper and Patty started criticizing him he, he started to yell and scream on the top of his lungs by saying will you stop criticizing me that sort of way which causes them to to be sent at the principal's office which actually the the door actually says director <laughs> which would have been in French for principal they went back to the chateau while Pierre and Pepper and Patty and Marcy just wants up staying over at, at the farmhouse again just to, f to keep on the lookout to see what's going on but that is until Violet showed up at night and actually kissed Charlie Brown in the cheek which made Linus feel very frustrated and mad that <laughs> as a result of this you know he decided to find out on what's going on and why did Violet kiss him. So then when they went inside the chateau, inside the house, you know, Linus had got so mad at her that she, she began to find out that that the main reason why she went over there is is the fact that he was trying to make a contact on the American soldier which he just showed the photograph on who he was. and so on and so forth and then all of a sudden she accidentally dropped the candle that suddenly fell on the ground and caused it to be on fire you know, the entire village was on fire and suddenly Linus and, and Violet were calling for help until Charlie Brown f woke up and found out about it and then which <laughs> of course Charlie Brown wants up yelling and screaming you know, he was running all, all over the town to discover that there's a fire in the chateau which that means the fire department will finally arrive on the scene you know just to pull out the fire and they'll try to save you know Linus and, and Violet's lives in, in order to jump out of the building Linus actually throwed in the blankets so that way they can hold on to it and, and Violet can jump first into the blanket and then after that Linus decided to jump on the pool which Snoopy and Woodstock had brought in. So that was funny. Also before this hack actually had happened, uh, Snoopy and Woodstock once again at the sports bar had spotted the the bad neighbor, you know, that's in the shadowy figure. But they never showed his actual face and everything. So anyway, after everything turned out, you know, they they were happy and they began to discover that Charlie Brown I have a relationship with the soldier which okay I know there's a spoiler on this one but I think we're gonna be okay not to mention it but that's fine but anyway they, they all greet them good luck you know they they finally left the chateau you know you know greeting uh, Pierre and and Violet and they finally were on their way you know going to a lot of sites after they got crashed in a traffic with so many cars around and you know, it causes uh, <laughs> you know, Snoopy to get upset and, and yeah I remember because there was a scene where, where Marcy was speaking in French you know telling them about the accident so 
everything went right ahead and, and then the movie ends and I gotta say I, I really enjoy this movie a lot it's definitely fun and very exciting and very interesting for a Charlie Brown movie even though it wasn't nearly as good as the first three films yeah especially Race for Your Life Charlie Brown that's done by the same directors yeah, Bill Melendez and Phil Roman but I think it's as fun as as the movie can go for. Which, by the way, they did did a sequel to this, which happens to be a TV special back in 1983 called "What Have We Learned, Charlie Brown," which where the entire gang actually went, you know, after you know they greeted Pierre and and Violet, they finally went straight to uh, to the Omaha Beach and all these other sites that they went to. And they're basically focusing more on on the soldiers that died during World War II and then later they were going to go back to World War One. you know talking about all the stories behind all this yeah I have that special by the way um, which I bought a long time ago on VHS which was released by KVC I know Paramount did re-release that same uh, special that was digitally remastered so it looks much better than the KVC tape that I own yeah but it was a very good special I mean, it kind of worked well for a sequel, even though they didn't make a fifth movie prior to this. So I guess they should have had. Yeah, because it didn't do so well at the box office, just like like the other two had released, you know, like Snoopy Come Home and Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown. In fact, it was released on May 30th, 1980. You know, it was going up against The Empire Strikes Back. Yep, another Star Wars movie <laughs> being released on the Memorial Day. Day weekend. It didn't do so well as it seemed. But it's a good way that this movie came out as part of the celebration for its 30th anniversary at the time. So yeah. So it's really interesting for for Paramount to release this part of that. And it also had a special sneak preview when uh, on an episode of The Price is Right which I actually found the clip that was taken from a Game Show Network recording on YouTube so that was pretty rare something I never thought I would see in, in the special so yeah but I also really enjoy the film nevertheless I like the the scenes where <laughs> you know where Snoopy and Woodstock had go around doing a lot of crazy things you know, I, I I know I mentioned all these scenes there but I thought it was pretty fun that they were going around you know sightseeing while driving on the, the car but another scene I really did love, though, was when Charlie Brown was trying to get the French bread, yeah, longer French bread, inside the bakery. And suddenly, when, when he was taking one French bread, he was speaking French on that one scene. And, and then he was trying to go in straight to the door, and then suddenly the two breads were cut in half. <laughs> so then he wants up ordering another French bread, and in order to not make that mistake twice, he... He actually carry it like, like this, and then he went straight to the car, which you know Snoopy was fixing it. And suddenly he uh, closes down the hood, and and all of a sudden it also actually brought up a bit off the bread already cut off, and and he was screaming. Yeah. So then everybody started eating all the bread except for Charlie Brown, and that sucks. <laughs> Well, it's no worse than having Charlie Brown having to, to fix the, the motor from the car on what have we learned, Charlie Brown, which apparently his hands started getting in pain. Yeah, And it happened like three times, too. So that sucks. And even worse was when all the the seagulls you know, started crawling around the car. And <laughs> and one of the seagulls actually bitten uh, Snoopy's uh, <laughs> leg up. So, yeah. <laughs> I know, it, it's such a funny movie though I, I really enjoyed this film a lot I knew it, what they were coming for it was also one of the first movies that actually offered the show um, a close up of all the adults faces yeah and they even got to talk in the regular adult voices instead of the wah 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 that, that kind of voice so this was interesting because now we got to hear their voices. <laughs> yeah, even though most of them speak French and and 
plenty of others. But it was interesting, you know, that they wanted to do an, a nice change of pace. So the animation was stunning at the time, and you know, they had some great music once again by Ed Bogus and Judy Munson, you know, composing it you know, after the late Ben Scaraldi. Yeah, so they're still continuing with it. It was perfect. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed this. Um, and I gotta say this, I can't wait for this movie to finally get released in widescreen, anamorphic, on DVD. And it'll definitely be the same as Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown's DVD release. So I can't wait for October to, to arrive and get that film before the new movie, Peanuts, is coming up in November. Yeah, and I definitely can't wait to see that film. I know I would. So anyway, I give Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown, and Don't Come Back a solid four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.